In this video, I'm going to discuss the linear variational method. And so this uses the fact that our wave function can be expressed as a linear combination of wave functions. And so we will use that in order to find the energies of our system. And so this is just kind of comparing our, our standard variational and our linear variational methods right here. So in both, we start by defining our Hamiltonian. The variational method, we define our trial function as a function of parameters, uh, where in the linear variational method, we define the trial function as, as a linear combination of basis functions. Uh, then the step two in the variational method is to evaluate the expression for variational energy of trial wave functions as a function of parameters, where in the linear variational method we do the same thing, but now it's a function of the coefficients of the basis functions that we are uh, setting the energy with respect to. Then in the variational method, we found the minimum variational energy by taking the partial derivative with respect to each of the parameters, where in the linear variational method, we find the minimum of variational energy as a function of coefficients. And we'll do this by solving what are called the secular equations. Uh, then it, the fourth step in the standard variational method is to construct trial wave functions. So essentially putting our parameters back into the energy expression and then finding the energy. Uh, in the linear uh, variational method, we uh, do this same thing, but now with the coefficients there uh, rather than just these adjustable parameters. And then Otherwise, this is pretty much the same thing as the variational method. All right, so go through this a little bit abstractly at first, and then we'll look at sort of uh, an example of this. So first, uh, we define our trial wave functions as linear combinations. So we have this here, which is our ket vector, and we also have the bra vector version of it. So the second, uh, we find the expression for energy as a function of the coefficients. So here I'm saying the coefficients are these uh, alpha sub i, uh, where the numerator here is equal to this summation uh, over i and j for our alpha i and our alpha j with our wave functions psi i and psi j. Uh, and so we set this uh, expectation value here to just be h sub ij. And so we end up getting this in the numerator of our energy expression up here. And for the denominator, we just essentially go through the same thing. Uh, we set this equal to s sub ij, which uh, we see is called the overlap function, which uh, I'll sort of get to why that's called the overlap function here in a little bit. Uh, and so we end up with this right here. And so finally, we get our energy expression, which is uh, the top with this hij, and then this the bottom with this s sub ij. So third, we want to minimize the energy by solving the secular equations uh, by taking the derivative with respect to the coefficients. So we have this right here. We can multiply through by what we have in the denominator there, and we end up with this right here. Uh, so then we want to minimize uh, this energy with respect to the coefficients. So we want to find where the derivative is equal to zero. And so differentiating both sides, we get this, uh, but we see that uh, that this right here, this right here are gonna be equal to the Kronecker deltas, same with uh, this right here and this right here. We also know that uh, the Sij is symmetric, so it's also equal to S sub Ji, uh, and the Hamiltonian is uh, is Hermitian, and so the H sub Ij is equal to the H sub Ji. And so with all that, we can uh, then end up getting this expression here. Uh, and so when we have the derivative being equal to zero, what we end up with is this right here. And so the 
these are k different secular equations. And so uh, our secular equation, so we have our alpha 1 here times uh, times this H11 minus energy times S11 plus alpha sub 2 times the H21 minus energy uh, S sub 2 1 going all the way up to k. And we have k of these secular equations here, which we can then put into a matrix that looks like this. And so uh, what we end up with is this. So this has the alphas in the matrix here, where this we've now put it into this, uh, this column vector right here and set that equal to zero. So then we want to find the secular determinant of the matrix, which looks like this. Uh, and so we will end up actually getting a polynomial with n roots when we take the uh, the determinant of this. And then the polynomial is what we can use to solve for the energy. And so then we construct trial wave functions and energy with the coefficients that we uh, have just calculated. Uh, and so we could, for instance, use a Gaussian function. And uh, you can see I haven't gone through that, but that's because it's very complicated and uh, is usually just done with computers. All right, but now let's look at uh, a little bit more of a concrete example here. So a two atomic orbital system. So we first express our wave function uh, as a linear combination of wave functions times these coefficient here. Uh, so we consider the case where we have just n going from 1 to 2, so it's a 2 atomic orbital system. And so we end up with this right here. So this is our, uh, this is our expression right here. And so we have the energy expression E equal the, uh, the expectation value over this inner product, where this here is our expectation value. Uh, and so we end up with this right here. So uh, these are our coefficients, these C sub 1, the, uh, C sub 1, C sub uh, this is c sub 1 squared. So then we have c sub 1, c sub 2, c sub 2, c sub 1, and c sub 2 squared. Uh, we have defined uh, our h sub ij being equal to this. So we can then change it into this right here. Uh, then using the fact that our h sub uh, 1, 2 is equal to our h sub 2, 1, we end up with this expression here for our numerator. And we do kind of the same thing for the denominator, then defining our S sub ij equal to this inner product. Uh, we end up with this as our denominator. And so putting it into our energy expression, we end up with this right here. All right, so the third part, we want to minimize the energy by solving the secular equation. So we can rearrange the above, so multiplying through by what's in the denominator up here, and we end up with this right here. So we want to find the lowest energy, so we take the derivative with respect to our coefficients here. So we'll start with uh, the derivative with respect to the C1 coefficient here. Uh, we go through uh, a bunch of math here, which you can uh, look at in a little bit more detail on your own if you want. Uh, but then we have that the derivative we want to have set equal to zero. So we end up with this right here. Uh, and so we end up, uh, like I said, with this, then with the inner product being equal to that. Uh, so we get this expression right here. Uh, we drop these common factors of two in group-like terms of, of the uh, coefficient here. So we end up uh, ultimately with this expression here. So the C sub 1 times H11 minus E S11 plus C sub 2 H12 minus E S sub 1 2 equals 0. If we go through that same process, uh, so starting from here all the way down to here with uh, taking the derivative with respect to C2, we end up with this right here. So we have these two things, which I have boxed in red. And those are our secular equations, which we can put into matrix form. And we end up with this matrix right here, the determinant of which uh, we have right here.
And since these wave functions are normalized, we have that S sub I I. So when I equals J is equal to one. And so we end up with this right here. So we take the determinant uh, of our matrix, which uh, looks like this, and we want that to be equal to zero. After sort of foiling these things out, we end up with this second degree polynomial in the energy. So we can actually use the quadratic equation here to find uh, to find our two e or two energies here. So we have this uh, expression here. But we would then need to evaluate all these integrals, h11, h22, h12, and s12, which uh, we have defined as this above, remember. So we'd have to evaluate these integrals here, where the h sub ii is the energy of the atomic orbital i, h sub ij is the energy of the interaction between the atomic orbitals, the sij is the overlap integral uh, of the atomic orbitals. And so this is sort of what those orbitals would look like. So this would be uh, our first orbital and our second orbital we see right here where they are overlapping, which is that s sub ij uh, right there. And so, as I said, uh, I mean, we would have to evaluate all these uh, all these integrals here in order to solve this uh, quadratic equation. So we usually just have computers do it. And so I took this from this uh, Chem Libre text here. So you can uh, look at that uh, in more detail by clicking that link if you want. So we are using this Gaussian function. So we're gonna use this Gaussian function. And we want to uh, look at it by by looking at uh, how big of an n we have here. So how many uh, how many bases we have in our linear combination, our linear sum. And so what we see here, if we just have one n equals one, our Gaussian is just what we had for the standard variational method using the Gaussian uh, using the Gaussian as our test function. So we end up with this right here, which when we convert that to electron volts is the negative 11.5 electron volts, which is what we found in a previous video, which is. 15% uh, off from the real value of minus 13.6 electron volts. Uh, but as we sort of add more and more uh, uh, to our linear combination here, we keep uh, getting closer and closer to the real thing. So uh, as we see here, once we get to 16, so once this big N is equal to 16, so that would look like this right here, where we're adding the alpha 1, alpha 1 to the alpha 2, alpha 2, all the way up to alpha 16, alpha 16 there. And so what we see is, uh, well, this is actually in these Hartree units, but you can just Google Hartree to electron volts and get the conversion for that. And so when we convert that to electron volts, that is actually minus 13.6 electron volts, which is uh, sort of exactly correct. Uh, but yeah, so this is the linear variational method uh, in the notes. I have this down here, which is actually uh, from my chemistry playlist, but you can sort of see this uh, a little bit more in action if you want for molecular orbital theory. Uh, but anyway, that is the linear variational method. Uh, and so yeah, uh, it's very similar to the standard variational method. It's just, like I said, we're taking advantage of the fact that our wave function is a linear combination of, of wave functions, and we can uh, sort of add more and more of those to it uh, to get to a, a closer and closer approximation of the actual energy. Uh, but anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one.